Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus came home with his disciples. Again, the crowd gathered, making it impossible for them to even eat. When his relatives heard of this, they set out to seize him, for they said, He is out of his mind. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he ties first up the strong man. Then he can plunder the house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. His mother and his brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. A crowd seated around him told him, your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. And he said to them in reply, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking around at those seated in the circle, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. At Christmas time, we hear some stories about Jesus and his origins and his family, but then we don't hear much about his adult relationships with his family. We do, though, have this encounter embedded in this story from Sunday's Gospel. Jesus seems to be gaining attention in his ministry. People are gathering around to hear him. And they must appreciate his message, although it's not without controversy. His family shows up amidst all of this. And he doesn't go out to meet them or confront them or interact with them at all. Instead, he distances himself from them and widens people's understanding of what it means to be his family. Those who do the will of God are his family. What do you make of this? Is he denying his family, especially his mother, who went through so much in his early years? And I guess the bigger question for me is, why is his family there? Are they trying to rein him in? Jesus is becoming a controversial figure. We know exactly how controversial things will get and how hard they'll be for him as well as his family and all who know and love him. Maybe his family is trying to save him from that. Or maybe they're embarrassed by what he's doing. Maybe they want him to stop preaching everywhere and eating with sinners and just come home quietly to be a carpenter. However, he is quite 
literally a man on a mission, and he won't be stopped. He is impelled to do the will of God, to follow his call, and he will not stop until he does that. Sometimes our families and our friends and other people in our lives don't really understand the things we are called to do. I'm thinking especially of the many college students whom I've accompanied over the years. A lot of them struggled to find their calling, and a big part of their challenge was discerning amidst their parents' expectations of them. Some of them had a hard time hearing God's invitation because their parents' invitation was so loud. Others were actually pretty clear about what they wanted to do with their lives, but struggled to negotiate their desire with what their parents wanted for them. They loved their parents, and their parents clearly loved them. The students didn't want to disappoint their parents, but they also wanted to live their lives authentically. That struggle was very real for them. And moving through it was how they transitioned from adolescence to adulthood. And that process is important for all of us. We all have to move through that in order to grow into mature and functioning adults. Now, I'm not sure if that's what's happening for Jesus in our gospel, but it does seem like he's moving in one direction and his family is not moving in that same direction or at least not at that moment. But he keeps moving forward anyway, and I think that's what we all have to do when God calls us to a thing. Whether it's our family or friends or peers or community, lots of us have people in our lives who have thoughts and opinions about our lives. Now, I'm not saying we should never listen to those who know and love us because they often have important things to offer to us. When we're discerning, it can be very helpful to know what the people in our lives think. However, we can't be controlled by the thoughts and opinions of other people, no matter how much we love them. There's no real discernment without freedom. And so we have to get to a space of freedom to authentically discern the will of God. Now, of course, that said, with freedom is also mental clarity and ability, being in touch with our reality and able to do what we feel called to do. If our clarity is diminished for whatever reason, we're not really free. If we're healthy and well, though, clear and open to the will of God, There comes a time when we consider what our loved ones think, and then we go ahead and do what we need to do. How do you feel about that? Personally, I find it challenging. There may be some people who find it easy to just lay aside other people's expectations. I think there are even some who rebel against expectations just for the sake of rebellion. And if you're like that, you can let me know how you do that. (laughs) I personally have never outgrown that thing inside that makes me care what other people think. I kind of hope to someday, (laughs) but here I am. On the other hand, I do tend to do what I need to do to follow God's call, even if that means disappointing some of the people in my life. So... I guess you could say I care what people think, but if that comes into conflict with the direction I know I need to take, I will follow God's call. So I'm aware of other people's expectations, but I try not to let them sit in the driver's seat. I also try to not let them navigate from the back. It's not easy, though. What has helped me is having people in my life who care about me but who are not attached to the decisions I make. People who love me ultimately want me to be free. I've had sisters, friends, spiritual directors, and mentors who have supported me as I've tried to listen to the voice of God. 
sometimes the voice of God even sounds like their voices as they've shared their wisdom with me. In many ways, I've surrounded myself with a chosen family like Jesus did. We have lots of people around me who also seek to do the will of God. And we reflect God's will and God's love and care back to each other. Maybe that's what the Christian family is really about for all of us. We each seek to do the will of God. When we surround ourselves with people who are trying to do the same thing, there Christ is present in our midst. There's a freedom in following God's will, a loving freedom which we offer to each other that transcends expectations. In fact, God doesn't have expectations of us, only invitations. When we follow God's call, God's will, then we know what it feels like to be a part of Christ's family. Amen. And now let's continue and maybe even deepen our reflection. What is your relationship with other people's expectations? Is it challenging or not that hard to negotiate other people's expectations of you? When it comes to making a decision or discerning a way forward, what helps you to get to a place of openness and freedom and listening to God's invitation for you? What makes it hard for you to hear God's invitation for you? Or what makes it hard for you to respond to God's call? Who are the people in your life who love and care for you unconditionally, without expectation? And how do you love and care for the people in your life without placing your expectations on them? Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's face and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other. Peace. <music>